This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. This is Ricky Dollywell here, coming to you from Swedish Medical Center here in Denver, Colorado. Today we're going to talk about medications used in the treatment of severe hypertension, whether it be hypertensive emergency, a intracranial bleed, or some other emergent issue where you need to have quick and uh, aggressive titration of blood pressure. The main agents that we talk about in this regard are nitrates, calcium channel blockers, adrenergic blocking agents, and medications such as hydralazine, enalaprolat, or fentolamine, which is not used as regularly. Let's first start with nitrates. So the nitrate medications uh, include, of course, nitroprusside, which has been around for quite some time. Um, and the medication can be infused intravenously and it acts within a minute or less. And once it discontinue, it's discontinued, it goes away after 10 minutes or less. The one big issue on this is that um, nitroprusside over a period of time is metabolized into cyanide, which can lead to a development of uh, cyanide toxicity, although this is, this is um, rare. It hasn't been used as regularly as it used to. The other medication is nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin, um, nitroglycerin is something that also can be in, infused. If you think about your doses, uh, a sublingual nitroglycerin dose compared to the drip, starting a drip at 200 micrograms uh, is very reasonable. Uh, given the fact that you are giving uh, nitroglycerin tabs, which is about the equivalent. And it's actually 0.4 milligrams, which is a higher dose than starting an infusion at 200 micrograms. So the benefits of this medication are twofold. One, you get venodilation as well as some mild uh, arterial arterial dilation, so after load reduction, but also a capacitance issue, which can assist in a patient who has CHF or some type of volume overload state. The next class of medications that we talk about are those in the adrenergic blocking agents. So specifically, um, we can start with labetalol, labetalol being a beta adrenergic and alpha adrenergic blocker. It has a rapid onset time of about five minutes or less, but it doesn't have as high of hypertensive, antihypertensive efficacy as something like nicardipine, for example. Um, it can be given as IV boluses or titrated into a drip form, although I do not see this as, as regularly as medications such as Esmol, which is our next medicine. Esmol is a cardioselective beta blocker, which can be, uh, which is rapidly metabolized and has quick on and quick off. The half-life is about nine minutes and its duration of action is about 30 minutes. So you can rapidly titrate this medication. Um, so it's a very good choice uh, if you would like to have very close and rapid titration. A medication which I don't love, uh, which some people still use, although I would steer against it, is hydralazine, which is a direct arteriolar vasodilator, um, and it doesn't have any effect on the venous circulation. The issue with hydralazine, I find, is that first is that uh, it it uh, it needs to be used with caution in patients who have coronary artery disease or an aortic dissection, and theoretically a beta blocker. Um, should be given to minimize the reflex uh, sympathetic stim stimulation that can happen. The other issue is that hypotensive responses to hydralazine are really difficult to actually predict. So you don't really know what you're going to get with, with certain doses because it's a patient-to-patient -patient, uh, specific thing. The last class of medications I'd like to discuss are calcium channel blockers. The old school uh, medication that we use and which has continued to be used is nicardipine. Nicardipine is uh, a medication that can be given as an intravenous infusion and the initial dose is about 5 milligrams per hour which can be increased to a max of 15 milligrams per hour. The one thing with nicardipine is that it has a longer onset of action, which makes it difficult to rapidly titrate. And it has also a longer serum elimination half-life, which is about three to six hours, meaning that once you get to your peak and if a patient's blood pressure does end up dropping, it's uh, 
turning it off, you will still have its residual effects on the patient. This brings us to my favorite medication, uh, which many hospitals still don't uh, stock, but which I am hoping uh, you guys will learn a little bit about, and that is clavidipine. Clavidipine is a really short-acting dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker that's use intravenously. The the elimination elimination half-life for this drug is about 5 to 15 minutes, so it's very quick. It reduces blood pressure without affecting the cardiac filling pressures. Uh, but of course, you know, there is the concern for reflex tachycardia. It it has a huge benefit in the fact that it can be up titrated very quickly and turned off immediately if a patient's blood pressure uh either plateaus or drops, meaning you have a much uh, easier safety profile for these patients. So the kind of thing, quick takeaway from this is that there are multiple different types of medications you can use when you are dealing with patients who you are trying to titrate their blood pressure very specifically. The ones to think about from a easy titration standpoint are clavidipine and esmolol. Uh, with uh, nitroprusside and labetalol, as well as nicardipine being some of the old school go-tos. So take some time, take a look at what medications are out there, do your research on clavidipine and consider that next time you're trying to titrate a person's blood pressure very closely. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.